Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to part 3 of this Boosted Board video series. Uh, if you missed part 1 and 2, I suggest you go ahead and check them out. And uh, this is going to be part 3. So in part 1, we attempted to recover this Boosted Board battery. Unfortunately, it sat for way too long without charge, so we were not able to accomplish that. We ended up having three good cells and nine bad cells. And then in part two, we upgraded the boosted board ESC with one of these inertion fog box unities. I have a, a third one which is already installed into the board. And we also designed and 3D printed this enclosure, uh, which replaced the original enclosure right here. We are gonna go ahead and build a battery pack and design and 3D print a battery enclosure for it. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. These are Samsung 30Q cells rated for 15 amps and a capacity of uh, 3000 milliamp power. So these are ideal for what we're trying to do. It's going to give us a nice range and uh, enough current to get a punch going uphill. I'm also recycling these from an old battery pack so that's why I'm testing them and I will be marking the capacity of each cell. So I'm going to go ahead and take the measurement of the whole pack, then design and 3D print the enclosure. So the first draft of the enclosure is printed. Now let's go ahead and check the fit. So the fit is perfect as you can see. Alright, so I'm gonna build the battery now using the K Weld powered by three LiPo batteries. Uh, got some pure nickel strips as you can see negative positive positive negative negative positive and so forth and I'm gonna connect these together straight so I'm gonna measure and cut the right size nickel strips
right? So after this, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around. And then we're gonna go ahead and use these nickel strips. That's fine, well, this side. So this step can be a little bit tricky unless you really know what you're doing. If you notice, I added some white tapes between four cells and these three sets of four cells and then these are uh, two sets of four cells this is exactly where these square nickel strips are gonna go as you can see I have five of them and I have five tapes on the battery pack so if you are following my instructions to build a similar battery I suggest you really pay attention here uh, you can use these three nickel strips at the bottom as reference and uh, mark these parts because that's where the square nickel strips are gonna go if you mistakenly put it on the wrong spot, you're going to cause a spark because this would be shorted. Uh, also, if you accidentally drop anything conductive onto it, it's going to spark as well. So I suggest you also remove your ring if you're wearing one. Uh, straight nickel strips because there will be two remaining terminals uh, to spark weld with these two straight ones. And the third one. Alright, the fourth one right here. And also try to keep the nickel strips away from the bottom of the battery. Putting the battery pack on top of nickel strips will also cause a short. Next step is the straight nickel strips on the remaining terminals. This is going to be the negative of the whole pack, and this is going to be the positive. The welding is all done as you can see it's a nice looking pack looks tiny but it packs a lot of punch from here we can just go ahead and unfold it just like this
fold it like this. And press it. Alright, and as you can see. Alright, so let's go ahead and get the BMS ready. So let's measure it. Alright, we are at 49.8 volts. Alright, so from here we're gonna go ahead and fold these, just like this. Alright, next step we're gonna go ahead and solder the BMS. Alright, for that we're going to put some tape on the side of the battery. Let's start go right here. Alright, have a second one for this side, but after I've soldered the wires, it's going to be it. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and weld this onto the positive terminal. That's on there. So the balance leads are wired, as you can see. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the BMS. Alright, balance leads connected. So we are good. I'm going to put it to charge as you can see only at one and a half amps and at the same time I'm going to keep an eye on the voltage in each cell using a multimeter and I'll also keep an eye on the temperature of the battery pack making sure the cells are not getting warm so far so good
so since I designed the enclosure flush and the deck is curved I'm going to have to make up for the curvature of the deck by 3D printing a piece that would go down first and the enclosure can uh, go on top of that so it does not bend the enclosure uh, over time so here is the design and as you can see the sides it's uh, curved and this is going to match uh, the deck curvature now we're going to go ahead and 3D print it I'm printing it using flexible filament as you can see it's really really flexible this way we're going to have a good cushion uh, for the bedroom enclosure and match the curvature very well as you can see this is the filament I'm using alright so the flexible is printed and as you can see this is gonna be great just a little bit of stringing gonna install the battery this is gonna go in here Alright ladies and gentlemen, boosted board fully upgraded to a fog box unity. Each motor set up to handle 60 amps. Maybe that's overkill for these motors, but that's gonna give it an insane torque. And uh, equipped with a 12S2P battery pack using Samsung 30Q cells. So yeah, now it is time to take it out for a test ride. So in case you're wondering why I decided to use an XT60 connector as a charge port, uh, it's because I have an external battery, as you can see here, with a long cable. And if I run out of battery, I can just keep uh, the external battery in my backpack and then run the wire from the board to the battery in the backpack and keep riding which is not possible if I was using a regular barrel jack connector as a charger so that's why I decided to stick with an XT60 connector they can handle more current Doing the graffitis.
turning is a little bit too hard. I think I have the bushings too tight. Alright, so this is a, a slight hill. Let me see how it takes off. Ah, yes! It is super fast, as you can see. Even on the hill. I have another one coming up. It is blazing fast, super quick. doing great no scalps nothing I mean so far I'm about to beat it up so I made sure I designed and 3d printed these in super good quality as you can see and it looks like I also have a good battery range as you can see we're still at 48.6 volts so that's uh, good to know I was thinking that the 2p wouldn't last that long A super fun ride super fun ride all right so uh, yeah time to head back <laughs> 